Hey, what's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to go over how you can receive email notifications every time a new document gets inserted into your MongoDB database. So to do this, we are going to go over step-by-step -step on how you can utilize triggers inside of MongoDB. Before we get started, if you can hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this, that would be greatly appreciated. And one other thing, if you don't know how to connect your MongoDB database to your actual application, I recommend watching a YouTube video on how to do that. So first thing is first, I wanna show you a demo of how this actually works. So what I have running is a local development server and we are going to track our expenses. So all we're gonna do is add an expense and add a cost to that expense and then add it to our database by clicking this button. So what we could do is we could add the expense of Chipotle for $10. This will add a new document to our database, which means we are gonna get a real-time update and get an email notification sent to our email. So if we look in our email, we have an expense added at 8.39 p.m. and it is 8.39 p.m. right now. So if we click it, I have expense added and the expense added to your list was Chipotle. Another thing we could do to make sure is we could refresh our database right here, which is where we have all of our data. And if we look at the latest update in our database, you will see that we should have a Chipotle in here. Let me refresh it. We have Chipotle right there for $10 that we just entered. So everything is working good. And what I am using is, I have VS Code as my text editor. I am using a Next.js 14 application with server actions. I have MongoDB as the database, and I'm using Prism ORM to connect the database to my application. So we're not gonna worry about any code inside of the VS Code editor because that is not what this video is about. The video is about using triggers. Okay, so what we could do here is we could click triggers underneath the services tab here on the left side of your screen. And this will allow us to create a trigger based on the project we are in. So as you can see, I already have one trigger created for this specific project. If you haven't created a trigger, you're gonna have nothing here. So please click add trigger button right here at the top right. And I'm just gonna go into my trigger for now. So the very first question they ask is the trigger type. So what is the trigger type? Is it a database or a scheduled? So database allows you to access real time changes inside of your database. So this is best for sending notifications whenever there is a change to a specific document inside of your collection. And scheduled is, it allows you to run a scheduled function whenever you pretty much define it. So this is best for sending nightly reports at a specific time, scheduling a weekly newsletter or something to that nature. But if you do wanna get real time updates of when a document is added, like we do, you're gonna click database. Next is you're gonna name your trigger. You can name this whatever you want. This is only gonna show up inside of mongodb.com then you wanna make sure it's enabled because the trigger needs to be enabled for it to fire the function. Next, we could skip through this. You, do, you could leave this disabled. You could leave event ordering as enabled. And one thing before you keep going is I'm just showing you the main things you should change. Obviously, I'm skimming through some of this. This isn't a full in-depth tutorial on all of these properties, but this is how you can get up and running. Okay, so the next thing is trigger source details. We want to watch against a collection. Next is we have to pick the cluster that we are pretty much going to watch. So the cluster we're gonna watch, if we go to our database and then we go to browse collection, we are in cluster zero, right? So we have cluster zero selected. We have our database name as users and our collections name as expenses. And if you look back, we have users and expenses. So everything matches up and you can just click the down arrow and this should auto populate to whatever it is based on the project you're in. Next thing is very important is we want to only execute the trigger based on this specific operation type. So for us, whenever an expense gets added, which means they inserted a new document inside of your collection. You do have three other choices, which is update document, delete document, or replace document. So depending on what you do, want to do with your project, those are the ones you should select. Next thing is you want to make sure your full document is enabled. This allows us to use the change event object, and this allows us to access all the properties inside of that specific document. So for example, if I go back 
in our example, we have an underscore ID, a name, and amount. If we use the change event object, we are able to access all of these properties and we could use it inside of our email or whatever function you're gonna fire off. You could skip the document pre-image, just leave it disabled. And then where all the magic happens is actually creating the function. So what this does is allows you to write a function and I'm writing mine inside Node.js. And the very first thing is right here at the top right, you could add different dependencies. So this is how you install different packages. So in our case, we're using Node Mailer. So you're gonna click it, you're gonna type Node Mailer, whatever version you want. And if you don't type in a specific version, it'll just use the latest version and then you click add. And then you must manually import it here at the top like I did on line one. And then as you can see, here's the code. I'll pause on the screen so you can read all of it. But I'm not gonna go specifically on how to write this node mailer code because this video is all about triggers. But it is pretty self-explanatory and if you don't know how to do this, I recommend watching node mailer video or looking at their docs. But what we're doing here is we are setting up um, an email service provider to allow us to send emails to somebody or in our case to ourselves. And as you can see here on line five, we have the function, the start of the function, and we have the change event object getting passed into this function right here as a parameter. So we this will allow us to access all the properties inside of the document. So as you can see here, we are sending everything to my email. We have a subject line and then the HTML, which is the email body. And what we're saying here is we're saying the expense added to your list is the change event object dot full document dot name. Another property you can access instead of dot name is dot amount or dot underscore ID. Obviously in your guys's case, it's whatever properties you are taking into your database. And then this function will fire off when a new document is inserted and this will fire off as a trigger type of database, which means it is gonna be in real time. So that is pretty much how triggers work inside of MongoDB. Um, like I did earlier in the video, I did a demo. We'll just walk through one more time. So I'm gonna refresh my development server. We're gonna add a new expense. We'll call this iPhone. We'll say it cost $1,000. We're gonna add the expense to our database. We are going to go to my email. It says expense added at 8.53 p.m. And as you can see, it is 8.53 p.m. And then expense added and the expense added to your list, iPhone, which this is the change event dot full document dot name. And it gives us the value of iPhone. And that value of iPhone is technically inside of our database too. Which if we scroll all the way down, we have iPhone, which is dot name and amount of a thousand. So that is in a nutshell how you use triggers inside of MongoDB to get access to real time changes in your database. This is very helpful if you do have an application that is making users sign up so you know when a new user signs up, when a new user gets deleted, when a new user gets updated. So I hope this video has helped you. And if it has helped you, it'll be really great if you guys could hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this. Other than that, Thank you for watching and happy coding.